G'day you bloody legends, I'm back for another week with another video just for you guys. This one you actually haven't been requesting, but I figured I would do it anyway. It's going to be another debating video, another talking video, educational video for some people. They may not know that there's actually a choice. So we're going to be talking all things 12 volt circuit breakers versus inline fuses, blade fuses, MIDI fuses, mega fuses, you name it. I've got all the fuses here. We're going to break it down. We're going to tackle some myths. I'll give you my thoughts. I'll give you my feedback. And then you guys can chuck in the comments all your feedback, which ones you think are better. And for those that may not know there's an option, it'll help them work out which way they should go in their caravan, in their 12 volt setup. That's what these videos are for. Now, is there a giveaway? Bloody Dan Tootin, there's a giveaway. <laughs> you like that? There is a giveaway. I did promise you guys, if you get the channel bigger and better, that I will get the giveaways bigger and better. So this week, I am going to do that. Wait till you see what's coming up. Let's throw the intro so we can get into it. <laughs> I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love for the fakeness if you wanna play tough and wanna hate this Okay, punters, let's get stuck straight into the give back giveaway. What is the bigger and better prize I have up for grabs this week? Not coincidental, I'm standing next to a fridge. That's right, I'm giving away a fridge to one of you lucky punters watching this video right now. And it is simple how you can win. Drop a comment below and you're in the draw to win. Now, there is actually the choice of three fridges. The winner will get to pick between 65, 60 litre draw fridge, or you can go the 30, 60 litre chest fridge or smaller, or the 85 litre upright all by Kings. You get to pick, the winner will get to pick which fridge they want. So comment below which one you would want to take home or comment anything on the video and you're in the draw. Now, how will you know when this is being drawn? Every Thursday moving forward, we're going to do a YouTube live drawing that raffle that's run up. So this one will be again, two weeks time, we will draw the winner of the fridge and they get to pick exactly which one they want. Now, if you want these to keep happening, you want them to keep getting bigger and better, simple. Watch the video all the way to the end. That is key. Everybody needs to try and watch the video all the way to the end. Watch the ads as well. The more ads you watch, the bigger the money gets and the bigger that I can put into the prizes. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff and the channel will get bigger and the prizes will get bigger. And we might give away the 70. I know Ash said we can't, maybe we will. If we get the channel big enough, we'll give away the 70 to one of you lucky punters. Now let's get into the video and let's get debating all things 12 volt fuses and circuit breakers. Okay, legends, let's get into it. I reckon this one's going to be pretty bloody saucy as there is a fair few people out there who do not like circuit breakers and don't think they belong in the cars. Now, I'm going to be breaking some myths for you and actually giving you some information about how these work. So first off, for anybody that doesn't know, so your option is whenever you're doing any 12 volt wiring, you basically want to have protection of if your circuit short circuits or overloads, something basically malfunctions that it doesn't blow up the appliance that that cable's going into. So say your DC-DC charger, you should have something in between the cable and the DC-DC charger to protect it. Now, your options are either run circuit breakers or run inline fuses. So mega fuses traditionally used for inverters, or you've got inline fuses like these that are all protected, inline fuse like this as well, or you can go a circuit breaker. So the big difference is with a fuse, it obviously blows and you have to replace the fuse. So you've got to carry spares versus circuit breaker. When it blows, it just trips and then you push it back on once you fix the problem. So traditionally, I actually like circuit breakers more. We will go into why I like them more after we break some myths. You guys comment below, I'm interested now, which one do you honestly reckon is better before we get into the educational side of this? Okay, let's break some myths. Well, actually, it's going to be sort of proving a myth because it is true, but there is a catch. So a lot of people say you shouldn't run circuit breakers inside your engine bay or anywhere where it gets hot because they believe that if it gets too hot, they will trip by themselves due to heat. Technically, they're not wrong. But the fuse in the exact same temperature will also blow. For those that don't know how circuit breakers and fuses work, they work exactly the same way, most of them. There is two ways that circuit breakers work. 
a piece of metal and when it basically gets to a certain temperature because of the current going through it because electricity creates heat when it gets to a certain temperature it basically breaks and then trips the circuit what do you know a fuse does the exact same thing when that exact same temperature is reached that piece of metal blows now there is also magnetic circuit breakers where basically the magnetic current created by the electricity will then make a trip those ones will be a little bit different they wouldn't trip in an engine bay so they're the better ones to go but as far as fuses and circuit breakers tripping under heat 100 correct if you can get the heat in an engine bay to match the heat that these will trip at then it would trip very unlikely it will get to that heat but it is possible but it's across both so those that are sitting there yelling at the screen saying eh, you shouldn't put circuit breakers in engine bays you shouldn't put fuses either then if that's what you're believing myth cracked sort of let's get into the pros and cons of each okay let's start with the inline fuses what are the pros and cons of an inline fuse now the biggest pro to this has to be the price they are phenomenally cheap to buy replacement fuses are cheap to buy your install costs will be like yeah dramatically reduced i'm talking for one of these you're looking at i think 20 bucks is asking too much versus for a circuit breaker like one of these ones you could be up around depending where you get it done they could charge a sting you 100 bucks for one so yeah there's a big difference in price what else is good about the inline fuse obviously if you go this style nice and neat simple basically cable runs through it runs out the other end and you can basically just leave it somewhere on a cable uh, same with this style if you go into your mega mega fuses then obviously they need to be mounted somewhere your best ones i reckon if you're gonna stick with a fuse these are the cheapest to buy a pack of like what's this a pack of 100 or something will cost you 20 bucks so you can get these on an inline fuse the benefit is if these blow you pull it out put a new one in nice and simple the negative to this style is if they blow it is an absolute pain in the ass so you have to get your socket out you have to undo the bolts take out the fuse take off the cables put in a new fuse put your cable back on and screw it all up imagine doing that at like i don't know nine o'clock at night and we have had that happen so on our inverter it was actually the inverter on the caravan this is pretty common you can overload that because they can only run a certain amount of power and then once you exceed that power the fuse blows so on our trip to cape york we had two of these blow ours is mounted upside down which makes it a pain in the ass to change and at nine o'clock at night i was having to change this in the dark with a flashlight pain in the ass i now have a circuit breaker in there what is the pros and cons of circuit breakers con the price has to be the price you can get them off ebay for a fair bit cheaper or hardcore sells them pretty cheap big wave battery sells them pretty cheap as well so if you're organized you can get them yourself and get them a fair bit cheaper that's been the biggest con other than that uh installs a little bit harder you have to lay them out a lot more have a bigger surface area have brackets and stuff for them but the biggest positive to them is if this blows boom then you just click it straight back on once you fix the problem and you're off and rolling you don't have to carry spares if you run out of fuses that's it game over no charging no power to anything your whole system is out of action if you don't have fuses you will never have that problem with circuit breakers it is such a better idea to run these so that you don't have to carry spares you've got to think another one another example that i have we're at byfield national park we had a short circuit somewhere in our cable and our dc dc charger keeps tripping the circuit breaker i kept thinking i found it tape it up there was actually a fair few different nicks and stuff through the cable because stupid me i didn't put it in conduit and it had a fair few nicks in it so i'll tape up the nicks flick it back on it would keep tripping till i actually found the one that was shorting out i reckon that tripped probably eight times before i found it if we were running fuses i would have burnt through my fuses had no power all food for thought now another massive benefit that people probably don't know as you can see in here i have two of my circuits flicked off 
that was a fuse I'd have to un so say for example this one I'd have to undo it take the fuse out pain in the ass so these two are actually running to the rear of the car and they go into the caravan I can plug in an Anderson they go into the caravan I've got two DC DC chargers in the caravan now when the caravan's not on they're off why because if they stay on I go from about 36 amps in the canopy DC DC charger all the way down to 16. now People may not know, but the way electricity works is the same as water. It's basically a current flowing through your cable. The more resistance there is, the lower you're going to actually receive into your units. So think of it as a garden hose. If you have one single garden hose running, nice pressure. If you then put a T intersection and run a second hose, really long hose somewhere else, your pressure dramatically drops in that first hose that you had. Same with this. Every single intersection that you have, every new cable that you run is sending that electrical current down there and reducing what you can have. If you have circuit breakers, you can flick them off and maximize the power where you want it to go. Still do it with fuses, pain in the ass though. Gotta get out tools, gotta undo them, gotta take out the fuse, nightmare. Much easier just flicking it off. Now, I'm sure some of you are yelling at the screen going, they don't make circuit breakers big enough to run an inverter. What's that under there? A 250 amp 12 volt circuit breaker designed to run an inverter. So we've got a 3000 watt inverter hooked up to that. If we overload our inverter, that trips, unplug something, come out and trip, put it back on. As I mentioned, this used to be under there and we would blow, we blew that two or three times on our Cape York trip and then as soon as we came back, in the bin it went. Definitely not worth the hassle. Pain in the ass, so much easier. Let's get into wrap ups. I am thinking here. Okay, so I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Comment below, do you think I'm wrong? Is this what should be going in everybody's car? Or should you still stick with fuses? Now I know a lot of you are gonna comment, how come no four wheel drive fitting shop? suggest using circuit breakers and they all will install fuses like this unless if you request a circuit breaker that's simple price can you imagine so for a dc dc charger with mppt you need three circuit breakers so that's three circuit breakers at say 90 bucks or three inline fuses at say 15 bucks can you imagine if one shop quotes this one shop quotes this this quote is going to seem extremely expensive and you're not going to go with them as a result majority of your shops will quote fuses unless if you request circuit breakers that's the reason why that's happening also there is a fair few that do believe that these trip in engine bay but that's purely because they don't understand how they work they are not an electronic there is no brains in here there is nothing that can fail due to heat they are simply done the exact same way. A piece of metal that at the exact same temperature reacts and trips, reacts and breaks. There is no difference. If one's gonna trip in an engine bay, the other one's gonna trip in an engine bay as well. So that's why that doesn't happen. The only other reason that a lot of shops don't do it is a lot of manufacturers will specify in their fitting instructions that you have to use an inline fuse. Red Arc is one of them. That on their fitting instructions, it recommends using an inline fuse doesn't say you can't do that they're just saying that because that's the most common used because of the price so i want to hear your thoughts now after hearing all of the pros all of the cons everything in it do you agree with me is this the better way to go not having to carry spares just being able to flick it back on or am i still an idiot am i still wrong and everyone should be going fuses i can guarantee you if you're on the road and you run out of fuses and you have no power, say you're right out, whoop whoop, say you're on, I don't know, let's say the NT, Lynchfield, or Kakadu, or you're on the Gibb River Road, you're going to be a good probably three, four days before you get to anywhere where you can pick up a spare fuse, unless if you run into somebody to give you one, which means no power, trip over. Interesting. Food for thought. I hope this has been educational for a couple of people and I hope for a few people they've sort of sitting there going, yeah, okay, now I understand a bit more. Maybe I should swap to circuit breakers. 
as you've seen across my whole system, there is only one inline fuse and that cable doesn't actually get used. It just runs into the cab and this is sitting on the end of it. One of these so that it's protected. If I use it down the track, I'll swap it over to a circuit breaker. Now, into the giveaway. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. Comment what fridge you would want or comment anything you want and you're in the draw to win. Remember, like as well. Give us a subscribe so that you know when we go live. In two weeks time, we'll be drawing the fridge and we'll be interested to see which one they pick. Now, tomorrow night, after this is up, will be our second live, second live giveaway. So pay attention, I'll already have a video tile up for it. It'll be all pre-done. So I'll see you on the live. Until next time, guys, like, comment, subscribe, follow the Instagram, follow the Facebook. See ya.